Yeah, minimum things to do to port an autos. Uh, any of you who has done it might be able to explain. Let's look at what the autos. So basically, when you say port thing, here is a, a microcontroller hardware, right? It has probably few things that are pertinent to the autos. One is, of course, the, the CPU and maybe the, the memory layer. What else we can think of? Um, the interrupt vectors and things like that. Where is it to be kept, etc. Um, so this is physical memory, interrupt vectors, and maybe the timer, because OS requires the timer uh, hardware, right? Now, these are the hardware that are used by the OS. So the, the porting will involve specific inputs on how this particular processor or MCU is handling this uh, hardware. So if you see in our task, there are these task schedulers and uh, maybe the timer module um, and then memory management module. And things like that. Uh, rest are all software, like for example, the semaphores, etc., or software, or pure software, mailboxes, etc., or pure software. But the task scheduler, if you see, one of the basic things that it does is context switching, which means what this context is for a given MC. So it may be the registers to be stored. There may be the, M, uh, the FPU registers as well. If this hardware has floating point unit, if it has memory protection unit, so those registers. Maybe something else is part of the context. So what the context means in the given MCU and how that context has to be uh, restored or stored, uh, saved, is one part of the, port, a very basic part of porting an Altos. So an Altos, such as a free Altos, uh, has something called a porting dot h some header with macros or porting macros which will say as part of functions it will have port stubs or function stubs macros and function stubs for all those things with, for which it needs porting so if you just go to the git li uh, library of uh, free autos you can see uh, I think it is called portable.h. Okay. Um, if you see, basically, there will be a bunch of uh, macros, and those macros will be, you know, will be protected by some if def, if def, which architecture. So you may say ARM, and then which compiler, because sometimes compilers have their own twists to the porting. So you will see if this, then there will be a, a, a macro call specific to that particular architecture and that particular compiler. So it may have something like IAR and ARM. So, or you can have a version for GCC and ARM. So basically you have to implement these macros and you will see context Switching task, task context switching is one fundamental. Um, this one. Interrupt vector table location, locate uh, interrupt vector table initialization will be one because it's a very basic mechanism. And then the memory layout basically setting up the uh, stacks. You may say this is part of the initialization code. Uh, so, some part of the initialization code would be, um, you know, sometimes the operating system itself will expect you to uh, provide information. It may provide you the macro, but you have to provide that. Uh, sometimes you have to implement that macro or you may you may be um, using some startup code for, you know, doing these things. So you OS need not worry about this thing. So, but when it comes to context switching, and then the which interrupt to be used for 
um, uh, let's say timer tick. Yeah, in fact, one of them will be OS tick or something. Some macro will be there. So somebody has to call this. So OS will not know how that timer is programmed, but it is expecting this to be called for whatever ticks it, it expects, 10 millisecond or something. So this is because it is going to use this for scheduling events. So, and then actual context switching. These are the two minimum things that it needs to uh, know. And uh, actually there is the task control block of the OS. So there all the information in the task control block will be uh, read or uh, written by some macros. So for example, uh, critical sections, there will be a macro called enter critical and then exit critical. Now what this means is you may use uh, global interrupt disabling enabling or you may use some kind of a hardware lock. This is up to the hardware. Uh, in the given hardware, you may choose to, uh, you know, if the, it has the hardware monitors, like in the case of ARM Cortex. So you have the LDRX, uh, STRX. Instructions available. You may choose to implement a critical section using a hardware lock. And uh, so, but the OS for its own uh, data structure maintenance, it may call this enter critical, exit critical. And it will leave the, uh, the person porting to decide how it is implemented. It may be just done by disabling interrupts or it may be done by using any fancy features on the hardware. Um, so basically, it, even enabling interrupt and disabling interrupt, for example, enable interrupt, which is an OS service for applications. But for the OS itself, this has to be implemented on that particular hardware. Uh, for example, using the NVIC um, uh, mask registers, or it may be using the global mask or the prime mask. So this is specific to the ARM hardware. So the OS will provide them, uh, you know, expect this macro to be uh, implemented by the person porting it, and it will make this available through the OS APIs for the applications or it may use it internally for its critical sections so such functions have to be uh, they have to be implemented or on a particular uh, particular uh, hardware the other thing is of course the cpu uh, word length this is a hardware dependence you may have 16 bit cpus 32 bit or 64 bit so any alignment requirements will have to be uh, considered for uh, porting. Okay, um, these are the things I could think of: timer tick, memory alignment, um, interrupt handling, and then of course context switch. Yeah, uh, one question uh, about the timer tick. So, uh, what what are the standard values you have seen that OS tick? Uh, like uh, like ten millisecond or one millisecond or more than that, less than that. What's advisable? It's a you know it's a function of what kind of system you are building. That's why it is left as configurable. Uh, ten milliseconds or hundred milliseconds is good enough. Um, ARM provides the special cystic, uh, which can be high resolution timer. Now, some Linux uh, operating systems expect this. Just a minute, please. I, somebody is calling me. Yeah, so the question is uh, it typically is 10 millisecond to 100 millisecond. It is. Sorry, uh, Rahul, I think uh, Shubhash want to unmute actually. Uh, so it looks like he's um, in muted. Oh, I don't see him logged in. Okay. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Yes, Subhash, you want to say something? I just wanted to add comment on WFE, but I think we have passed that point. We can we can discuss later. That's fine. 
Mr. Subhash, you had you said you wanted to ask something about WFE, and you just chose. No, yeah, yeah, no, that's the point I had asked to be unmuted. I think I joined probably five minutes late. That's why I missed that window where you you unmute everyone. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add a add like WFE use case, right? Like you would uh, like uh, in, as you mentioned, it's multi-core where where you need WFE. Uh, so spin lock is one use case, right? Where you, when you are, right. uh, one core is uh, take up the lock, the other core tries to take the same lock. Either you just spin or you do a WFE. Uh, so that's wait for event. And when you spin lock, when when the when the other core unlocks, it it does an SEV, and that that way you uh, the you wake up the other thread. Uh, I mean, instead of just blind, I mean, uh, pointlessly spinning and injecting the lock, you allow the low power mode to to be entered, right? So that's 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 one of the main use case of WFP. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So thank you. Okay. So regarding porting, any questions? No, I'm okay. Thank you.